Indeed, all praises are for Allah. We praise Allah, we thank Allah, and we send hamd and tasbih and glorification to Allah. Allah is deserving of all praises. Allah is deserving of all thanks and gratitude. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Ahad. He is one and one alone. Allah Ta'ala is Ar-Rahman, merciful, Ar-Rahim, compassionate. Allah is Al-Latif. He is very kind and irresistible. He is very subtle. Allah Ta'ala, He is Al-Wadud. Allah is that one who is full of love for His creation. He is Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Ghafur. Allah is the one who forgives sins in abundance, no matter how big they might be, and no matter how regular they might be, when we turn towards Allah, He forgives sins. These are some of the attributes of Allah. Allah is Al-Hafiz. He is the one who protects. Allah is Al-Ghani. He is the one who is full of treasures and wealth. Allah Ta'ala, He is independent. He has no need for us. He has no need for our wealth. He has no need for our worship. It is us who lies in need of Allah. He is a razaq He is the one who sustains and maintains. Allah Ta'ala is al khaliq He is al khalaq The one who creates and continues to create same species, different kinds. Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala has sent approximately 124,000 prophets to the face of the earth. 25 of them are mentioned in the glorious Quran. Allah Ta'ala has chosen one Nabi to send for the entire humankind, for the entire world. The Quran mentions him as Rahmatul Lil Alameen, a mercy to the entire world. The Quran speaks about him, Mubashiran wa nadira, the bringer of glad tidings, the warner, no other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the month of Rabbi al-Awwal. And we must remember that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your Nabi and my Nabi, Allah Ta'ala, his Habib, Habib Allah, the most beloved to Allah, Allah sent him on the face of the earth in this month. It is in this very sad month that Allah took him back. The month of Rabbi al-Awwal. It is very important for us to understand and to learn the tariq and the history of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His biography has been studied more by non-Muslims than by our own Muslim brothers and sisters. They know more about our Nabi than us. And that in itself is a big shame for this ummah that the muslim world we do not know much about our prophet except for his birth except for when he died except for minor things who probably was his father his mother his grandfather these kinds of things but muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a man to be studied emulated and to learn about the greatest successor on the face of the earth in every single aspect of our living and our death. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers, and we have some sisters as well, let it be known that Islam, it is the greatest gift that Allah Ta'ala has given to mankind. It is the only way of life that has been mentioned that it is a gift that came directly from Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty has given us this deen. This is why the Quran states, Whoever chooses another way other than Islam, Allah uses the word lan. Allah says it will never, never be accepted from him. Allah Ta'ala accompanied Islam that he has given to you and me with hidayat, the quality of Iman. Without Iman in the heart of the believer, without Iman, I ask you, I ask myself, where do we stand in this world? Iman is that thing that causes us to obey Allah's command, to obey the commands of Rasulullah 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam take iman out from the life of the believer and we will see we look at what we want to look at we listen to what we want to listen to we say what we want to say we act how we want to act we eat and drink whatever we want we dress however we want without iman we have no control over our lives iman is that thing that protects us it is that thing that protects us so much so that on the day of Qiyama, Allah Ta'ala will say to, to his Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look down into the pits of Jahannam, look down into the fire of hell, and anybody from amongst your ummati, you find with an atom's weight of Iman, bring them out. Bring them out. What does the Quran say? Wala sawfa yardo. Allah made a promise to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that very soon we will make you happy. We will make you satisfied. We will make you contented. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will never become happy and satisfied until all of his ummati enters paradise. Subhanallah. This is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man who cried. A man who cried before Allah in regards to his ummah when he did not even see us. And a man who will cry on the day of Qiyamah in regards to his ummah, his cry will be the same. Ya Rabbi, ummati, ummati. Ya Rabbi, ummati, ummati. Oh my Allah, my people, my people. He didn't see you, he didn't see me. Generations to come, he haven't seen them. But his plea and his cry was for each and every one from his ummah. Subhanallah. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was leaving the land of Medina. He was going back to the land of Makkah. And on this journey, he stopped at a place called Abwa. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stood at a Qabarstan. He stood in front of a grave. And he began to sob. He began to cry. So much so that Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Sahaba started to hear the sounds of the Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was crying. Umar radiallahu ta'ala goes behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he wraps his arm around him. And he also starts to cry. Why is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying? Umar doesn't know. Radiallahu ta'ala. He says, Ya Rasulallah. Ya Rasulallah, you are crying. Whatever it is that makes you cry, it's also making me cry. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hada qabru, qabru ummi. He says, this grave, this is the grave of my mother. It is the grave of my mother. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala has made it, He has made it impermissible for me to make dua for my mom. Subhanallah. He couldn't make dua for her. You and I, we are so blessed. We are so blessed that today we have our mothers alive. We can make duas for them. Those, who, those whose mothers and fathers would have died on Islam, we can make dua for them too. Those whose mothers and fathers are not Muslims and they are still alive, we can make duas for them too. But the day they die without Islam, then it will become forbidden for us. It will not be permissible for us to make duas for them. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came in this month and he brought Islam to us. Allah Ta'ala completed this way of life for us. Allah Ta'ala gave us this way of life. It is not up to you and me to be Muslims. Who watched the bakum, the Quran says. Who watched the bakum? It is he who has chosen you. It is not that I chose to be a Muslim, no. You didn't choose to be a Muslim, no. It is Allah who chose you to be a Muslim. Who watched the bakum was samakum al muslimin, and it is He who has named you and called you Muslims. Allah. We had a choice, but without Allah's guidance, without Allah's being al Hadi, Allah is al Hadi. He gives, He gives gifts. And he guides. It is he who has put it in our hearts to be Muslims. And for every single aspect of life, it is Allah who will put it in our hearts. 
Sometimes Allah closes the hearts and seals the hearts. Seals the hearts that we don't even recognize that the heart is sealed. And a lot of Muslims, we have become like that today. Kulubuna Gulf, the, the Jews used to say. They used to say, our hearts are sealed. Anything you are saying to us, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it can't penetrate our hearts. Your message cannot penetrate our hearts. Because our hearts, it is sealed. Nothing you say can go through these ears. Nothing you say can make us become Muslims. Our hearts are sealed. Allah says on the contrary. What is Allah who has sealed their hearts? It is Allah who has sealed their hearts. That even though they are hearing what the truth is, even though they are seeing the truth, it cannot penetrate their hearts. They have become like animals and wolves. Subhanallah. So we must thank Allah. When Allah presents an opportunity to us, when Allah presents an opportunity to us, and Allah Ta'ala opens the hearts, then we must grasp at the opportunity. And there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has put before every single ummati. As a test and a proof of his iman to Allah. A test and a proof of his iman to Allah. Shaitan, shaitan has put the contrary. Shaitan has made it different. That we see it different. The way Allah Ta'ala has made it for you and me. What is the test? The Quran says, As shaitanu ya'idukumul al-faqra." Subhanallah. Wa ya'murukum bil fahsha. Shaitan threatens you with poverty. And he encourages you. He encourages you. He orders you to do what is wrong. Wallahu ya'idukum maghfira minhu. Allah Ta'ala, he promised you forgiveness from him. Wa fadla. And grace and bounties. The Prophet wasallam explained this ayat of the Quran to us. And he says that shaitan, he comes to man. This mankind, shaitan has an effect on him. And this very said mankind, an angel Allah has appointed upon him. He also has an effect on this man. So two things, shaitan has an effect on him and the angel also has an effect on him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, shaitan, he threatens this man with evil repercussions and rejecting the truth. That if you give anything, ah, problems in your life. You'll become poor. You'll deprive your wife. You'll deprive your husband. You'll deprive your children. What you're going to eat tomorrow. What you're going to drink. What you're going to wear. How are you going to have fun? Oh, you're going to become poor. Shaitan threatens man. He threatens man that you will become poor. If you spend and give in the path of Allah. And he also threatens man by rejecting the truth. What is the truth? The truth is Allah says, When you give one, Allah multiplies it 10 times to 700. That is the truth. But the angel, the effect of the angel is that the angel promises a good end. That you will die on the path of deen. Allahumma man ahyaytahum minna fa ahyihi ala islam. Oh Allah, whoever dies from amongst us, let him die on Islam. Let him die on Islam. Subhanallah. Whoever lives amongst us, let him live in Islam. And whoever, O oh Allah, you take back, take him with Iman. The angel, they promises a good end and believing in the truth. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَنْ وَجَدَ ذَلِكَ فَلْيَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ 
that whoever finds the latter, that he is attracted to the angel, that his thought is in his inclination is towards the thought of the angel, that he will have a good end, that he will be adhering to the truth. The Prophet says, Falyahmadillah. Let him praise Allah. Let him thank Allah. Let him glorify Allah. Because the thought to do something good, it is always rejected many times by somebody. But we are going to do that for now. Eh? What are you going to give this for? What are you going to give that for? Somebody always interjects when you want to do something good. You're thinking what are you doing, boy? Then people are real thing. And the, and the shaitan come and whispers like that. Anytime you find yourself open to this thought that if I give something for Allah, my end will be good. My end will be good. Praise Allah for that. Allah has opened your heart. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Waman wajad al ukra whoever finds the first one in regards to shaitan, whoever finds that entering his heart, falyata awaz, falyata awaz min al shaitan." Let him seek refuge with Allah from shaitan. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited the ayat of the Quran, "As shaitanu yaidu kumul fakra." Shaitan threatens you with poverty. Shaitan, he threatens you with poverty. Don't give because you will become poor. The Prophet wasallam, he told us and he told the woman of Makkah and Medina, if you have to save yourself from the fire of Jahannam, even a little piece of date, you should give it in charity. Give it in charity. And this is part of the test of the believer. Wealth. Test your iman. And see what you will give to others. And see what you will give to Allah. See what you will give to your families. And see what you will give to Allah. Because whatever we have, it does not belong to me and it does not belong to you. It belongs to Allah. And we say it all the time. But our iman does not show that. Our iman does not reflect that. Our wealth will be the question that Allah will pose twice. Two questions about our wealth on the day of Qiyamah. Wealth is Allah's. Allah is Al-Ghani. He is the one who gives. What is going to happen tomorrow? You know, I know. We make preparation still. If Allah was to strike us down today, what is going to happen? The best sadaqah that we can give. The best charity that we can give is when we're healthy and strong. Don't wait for when you become sick, when we become weak, when we lie down in our bed and we say, oh, take some and carry the must now, now. No. The massage has been closed. This last week, I brought him an announcement. The Jamaat, we need your support. This is our Jamaat. This is our Jamaat. Allah Ta'ala has placed us in trust of this Jamaat. Allah Ta'ala wouldn't come down here and bring money for this Jamaat to run. No. Allah has placed us in trust. Allah is going to question us, you and me. How did we support the Jamaat? What did we do for the electricity bill? What did we do for the, the cleaning of the carpet? What did we do for the toilet? Did we buy a roll of toilet paper? Did we buy a bulb? Did we help out in cleanliness? How did we help support the Jamaat? This is our home first. Many people give to different masajid, alhamdulillah. But this is our masjid first. Let us also try to support the running of the affairs of our jamaat. Everybody is crying COVID. Everybody is complaining. Did we realize? Did we realize that this is not up to you and me? This is up to Allah. Whoever Allah will open their hearts, free. Because you know why? When we give one, Allah Ta'ala is going to replace that with much more. The Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu taqullah. Oh, you who have iman, fear your Allah. Fear your Allah. Wal tanzo nafsum maqaddamat li God. Let every soul look to what it has sent forth for tomorrow. Not what it has kept back. What it has sent forth. Allah mentions again to re-emphasize what taqullah and fear Allah. 
Inna Allah kabirun bima ta'amalun. Allah is acquainted with what you are doing. Allah knows well what we are doing. May Allah Ta'ala bless us. May He protect us. May He continue to help us in our struggles. May Allah Ta'ala open our hearts to realize that everything we are and everything we have, it belongs to Him. This is why we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We come from you, Allah. We have to go back to you, Allah. Everything belongs to you, Allah. Let this be a reality statement in our lives so that when we give for the sake of Allah and for the pleasure of Allah in regards to our jamaat, then know that Allah is going to multiply that. The wealth of a believer, the wealth of a believer can never ever run low in the sight of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the ability to see truth as truth, falsehood as falsehood. May Allah guide our hearts towards al-haq, towards the truth. Wal-akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen.